have the drumming and the dancing. We have crafts for kids. Um, there are many, uh, about 20 vendors here that sell items that are either Native American style and actually Native American. You want that one? Yeah, I want the green too. Okay. This one? Yeah, I want the green And uh, we sell the uh, Native American fry bread, which is the big hit because you can get it plain, you can get fruit on it, and you can have it into a taco, like a taco salad, it's called Indian taco. And we have buffalo burgers, which is a little unusual. But it's just a family gathering to us. The people that come in, we're just like family. There's never any problems. It's a happy time. People that come here love it. W-Y-N-D-D. -D. I spell it in the Celtic because that's part of my heritage too, and I like to confuse people. Wind drummer woman. Drummer woman because I make drums. The teepee is Sue. It's a Blackfoot door. These are made out of white pine. This is large pole pine out west. This is white pine here. Your teepee itself here is made out of sailcloth because when the, the, uh, they came over from Europe, people got tired of using buffalo hides, so they used sailcloth. It ain't cheap. And when it rains, yes, it stays perfectly dry. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Believe me, it can hail. If I got my rain pegs in and I got the flaps closed, the windows closed, it's dry. You put sticks up, you put the canvas around and pin it, it's a woman's job to put the teepee up. People say, did you put this up yourself? And I say yes. Because if a guy helps me put it up, he screws everything up. It is a woman's job because she was in charge of the, the shelter. That's what a powwow is. It's people coming together from all over, basically to socialize and party. It's as much fun as you can have without alcohol. <laughs> There's absolutely no drugs or alcohol here. That's very forbidden to powwows. You don't bring it. We wanted to see who was coming here from other areas. My sister has come almost every year since it started. And this is the first year that I've come and I'm really enjoying it. I didn't realize there would be so many people here from out of state. The first man and the first woman, their outfits are absolutely, they're astronomical, they're gorgeous. And I know that each thing has some sort of relevance to their culture and their religion. I just don't know what it is, but I plan to find out. Even if you're not Native American, it gives you a chance to learn something about Native Americans. Feel the culture, the music, the dancing, the beautiful regalia. It's just a nice place to be. My mother started in 1998. She loves Native American. I mean, we have Native American heritage, and she has a real love for Native American everything. And we actually started here at Mason Dixon Park, only it was over the hill instead of up here at the top. And uh, we moved a couple other places in between. In the beginning, it was called Warrior Trail Palo, but now it's Mountain Spirit. We've had Rick here almost every single powwow that we've done. I think the first couple he mount, may not have been here, but he comes all the way from North Carolina every year for us. First of all, you know, we, we didn't all live in teepees. <laughs> and uh, we're not all savages, you know, riding around half naked on horseback. We're, we're totally different people, you know. We're in touch with Mother Earth. Uh, you know, we uh, try, try to be a peaceable people, and uh, yet we serve our country, you know, when it's time to step up and you know we, we just want them to know that we're just like everybody else but with just a different culture and we'd like to share that with everyone you know it's um that's why you see a lot of people are, are now nowadays they're looking at um you know wow we got to heal mother earth we got to start looking back toward the natural healings the natural ways and they're coming more and more to us and, and i'm glad because you know we've used like things like hemp for years you know now people are starting to accept hemp and you know uh uh uh, it was outlawed as a drug, but it was actually medicine that our people used for years, you know. So there's a lot of things that we can teach, you know, that we can learn from each other. Just never had that opportunity. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The drums is uh, the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're, and your mother, when your mother's carrying you, that's what you hear is that heartbeat. So when children are born, they, they identify that. You know, that's why they brought the powwows and gatherings when it, as, as newborns. And um, the drum is, um, uh, we consider it like our grandpa. We take care of it that way. When we finish using it at the end of the day, we wrap it up, keep it warm, uh, take care of it, offer tobacco before we use it. Um, it's uh, drums, uh, like I said, the heartbeat of Mother Earth. 
And when you get gatherings like this, you know, uh, a lot of times it's the larger gatherings that camp so far away that you can't hear the PA system with that grandpa drum will carry for miles and miles. So they hear that drum far up, they know that when it quits, it's time to start to dance. So that's many, many uses for the drum. Well, you know, the eagle, eagle feather uh, is very sacred to us uh, because, you know, the eagle represents warriors that have fought, you know, for our freedoms, you know, and, and have died giving their lives. So uh, these eagle feathers, we believe that if those warriors have came back to continue dancing and watching over us. So when one drops to the ground, it's considered uh, uh, you've disgraced that warrior. So we have to, a uh, certain ceremony, which we use to pick up song, and the four veterans, they dance in four directions and pick it up and retrieve it in that, that way. Or the head veteran can choose to come out and just say some prayers and offer them tobacco and pick it up. Uh, it's done several different ways. We have three generations of uh, family here. I, uh, of course, uh, some of them are my grandchildren, some of them are my children, and then some of them are my adopted children. I adopted six kids and raised them. <laughs> just, the Lord's blessed us with, we have five successful businesses, you know, and, and so uh, we try to help our underprivileged kids to give them a, a good shot at life. We believe that, you know, on weekends, instead of kids out, you know, riding around, possibly getting their drugs or alcohol, they're out here, they're learning uh, good things. Number one, you're dancing, so you're doing something physical for your body. You know, the Bible says take care of your temple. Uh, number two, they're te we're teaching them respect, you know, to respect your elders, uh, and to uh, learn the songs and to, you know, to treat people the way you want to be treated. So there's a lot of teachings here as well. And that's what I want them to learn. I don't want them to, um, number one, I don't want them to get involved in drugs. You know, we have a big drug problem in our country today, you know. Uh, and uh, alcohol's never mixed with our native people. And so uh, out here, they're, they're, just, you know, they're here doing something good for themselves and most importantly for God. And God blesses you for that. I really like, uh, we have more people uh, show support because, you know, uh, number one, like I said, they can come out and learn something about, you know, um, how, how to, let's, let's get Mother Earth back healthy again. She's, she's, we really, you know, hurt Mother Earth, and that's what we're doing is trying to uh, clear up the rivers, you know, where we've polluted them for so many years. We're trying to reestablish the wildlife, and we're trying to uh, uh, get rid of the wildlife, we're talking alcohol and drugs and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's educational, it's fun and you meet some good people, you know, so come on out and join us. We'll be here tomorrow. <laughs>